Hello students, so in the previous class I started with the definition of fractal dimension and uh, today we are going to conclude this definition and then we will move on to reconstruction, the last topic of this uh, chapter. So, if you uh, go back to the previous class, so we introduced the uh, definition of correlation, correlation dimension D2 uh, that was up to here and uh, then uh, we will continue. So, we defined uh, this um, uh, uh, this P 2 L function. So, the, this, uh, co uh, this correlation function uh, by this formula and from there we defined uh, the correlation dimension D 2. Um, however, uh, by no means by no means um, it is necessary it is necessary to calculate to calculate all the distances, all the distances, distances uh, in equation 6, we are only interested, interested in small values of L, in small values of L so that only distances between between neighboring points are relevant are rele relevant right uh, in practice, in practice D 2 appears to be appears to be the most appropriate, the most appropriate choice for the estimation of fractal dimension. Fractal means uh, the dimension is not a whole number, it is a non integer definitely and therefore, fractal dimension which can be calculated using the formula that we have given. Right. Um, there is a small property or uh, whatever you want to say uh, characteristics, the family of dimensions dimensions d q defined in 6 defined in equation 6 that means, let me show you this one right defined in definition 6 uh, satisfies satisfies uh, d d q of d q that is equal to 0. So, that Uh, d q is less than or equal to d q dash if q is greater than or equal to q dash greater than q dash. So, d d q of d q is less than or equal to 0. So, that d q is less than d q dash if q is greater than q dash. Um, let us call this as equation number 8 and uh, the equality Uh, the equality holds the equality holds holds only if the measures m i in five are independent of i are independent of i right. Now, how does this fractal dimension is related for our case? So, let us see one example um, or rather connection with one of the examples. So, example 1. So, let us illustrate the numerical estimation. So, let us illustrate, illustrate the numerical estimation 
of the correlation dimension. Correlation dimension D2 by using formula 6 uh, with um, with 7 with equation number 7 uh, to the butterfly attractors to the butterfly attractor of the Lorentz equation. So, basically we integrate the Lorentz equation, we already know what is our Lorentz equation, we have already defined previously. So, we integrate the equations, um, uh, Lorentz equations um, by using this uh, Runge Kutta method. So, the way we solve it and the time step, let us say, uh, so let me write this, uh, basically we integrate. So, we integrate the Lorentz equation. Actually, Lorentz equation is one of the ideal equation that you can use to study chaos theory, right? So, it is a very um, ideal uh, equation, set of equations. Um, so, we integrate the Lorentz equations um, uh, using the Runge Kutta method, the time step. the time step used is delta t equals to 0 0.03 and taking 1000 integration steps, we obtain a series of 1000 three dimensional points, right, because you will get x t, y t and z t. So, x, y and z, they are representing one point in um, in R 3. So, since you have 1000 time steps, so you will get 1000 uh, three dimensional uh, set of points, three dimensional, dimensional uh, points on the butterfly attractor, points on the butterfly attractor. For this um, series, the two point correlation function P 2 L can be calculated from equation 7, from equation 7 and uh, a log log plot is given, given of P 2 L um, as a function L. as a function of of l and uh, what happens to that function of l so in the range of 2 less than l less than 10 the function shows linear behavior so this can be seen if you check if you choose uh, l between 0 to 10 uh, 2 to 10 then uh, I'll, I'll log log uh, this graph of P2L. So, P2L whatever formula we have can go back. So, in this formula uh, basically if you plot uh, this log of uh, n L versus log of L. So, that is the log log formula. Then we will get um, um, then basically this is uh, um, this P2L can be uh, thought of as a, fun, uh, as, a, as a function of L and in the range of uh, 0 to 10, this function shows a linear behavior, right, a linear behavior um, with slope, with slope uh, 
about 2 and uh, this value is a reasonable reasonable estimate for the true value d2 equals to 2.1 obtained by using considerably more points. Right. So, this is how we define uh, the definition of uh, fractal dimension and uh, one of the application on how to obtain this fractal dimension for at least um, this uh, Lorentz equation. As I told you, Lorentz equation is an ideal uh, toy problem for chaos theory because it gives you very nice uh, um, attractors, nice in the sense of course, uh, they are um, uh, chaotic in nature, but uh, um, we can grasp the concept of attractors and uh, how the, um, the chaotic behavior can be uh, understood. And from there, we can also obtain the fractal dimension uh, by using this uh, uh, Lange-Kutta methods, right? right. Now, we move on to the next definition that is called as a reconstruction. So, reconstruction, construction. So, in many physical um, uh, situations, uh, no appropriate model for system under consider consideration is up available, right. So, it can be possible that, uh, so sometimes mathematical modeling does give us uh, a set of equations that actually depict the physical problem, but in most of the cases or in several cases it may not be possible to have a, um, exact set of equations that can actually uh, give the uh, physical uh, system or that can predict uh, the behavior of the physical system. So, then in that case um, let me just write. So, in many uh, uh, in many uh, practical practical situation situation no appropriate no appropriate model uh, for the system under consideration is available is available even um, the number of degrees of freedom and uh, thus the dimension of the phase spaces and of the phase space is unknown. That means, they are not uh, known in advance, right. So, all one can usually do, so all one can usually do um, is measure one or few properties of the system do is to measure one or few properties of this system. So, the data consists of one or more time series that is it. So, from the definition one should like to deduce whether a system is in chaotic mode or not right. So, 
idea is that whatever set of problem a set of equations that you have just looking at the set of equations um, you want to predict you want to guess that whether the system will be chaotic or not chaotic in the sense um, if you disturb the initial condition even a little bit right so what dramatic changes that can bring uh, to the set of equations right um, you can also picture this uh, scenario in your uh, day to day life that uh, we have a fixed uh, routine throughout the day and uh, you may notice uh, on some days that uh, if there is a small disturbance uh, or small change in schedule at the very beginning of the day then it interrupts or, dis or disrupts the flow of the entire planning that you have for the day. So, this is like a chaotic behavior that you want to predict beforehand which is not always possible, uh, but uh, would be nice uh, to know beforehand that uh, due to that small uh, interruption at the beginning of the day your entire daily schedule got ruined. Uh, so, basically that is kind of the kind of uh, behavior that we want to know in advance uh, from any practical pro situation point of view or physical um, uh, problems uh, point of view that uh, you, you always want to estimate, you always want to know um, the, the changes or the, uh, the, the chaotic behavior a certain system possesses that uh, a slight disturbance here and there uh, or perturbation here and there can bring dramatic changes to your system. Right. So, uh, in, in that in those cases when you really do not know about the model or when you do not have sufficient information about the model. So, all one can usually do is to measure at least one or two or few properties of the system. So, that uh, you have a series of data points that can help you to estimate the behavior right whether it is chaotic or not that we see right. So, um, basically um, one would like to know. So, um, so, from this information, so from this information one would like to know, one would like to know, uh, to know whether the system is chaotic or not. chaotic or not. And if this were the case, one would be interested in the dimension of the possible attractor and the values of the Lapunov exponent, right. So, that is another thing that if you want to know whether the system is chaotic or not, then you would also want to know um, whether uh, yeah, what is the dimension of the attractor and also what is the Lapunov exponent. So, that you know how much uh, uh, deviation that you can do from the initial condition, so that your system does not become uh, too chaotic, right. So, if you if you are trying to predict the chaoticness of your system, then you might as well want to know your Lapunov exponent, right, which makes sense. So, uh, basically uh, what we are trying to do is that uh, let x t, so basically let x t be the unknown unknown state vector state vector so here you can add right we would like to know the dimension of the attractor and the Lapunov exponent um, so or maybe I can add it for you uh, so that the definition always looks complete so um, uh, one would also be interested one would also be interested 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 in the dimension in the dimension of possible attractor attractor and um, the value of the and the values of the Lyapunov exponent L e. So, let x t be the state vector uh, characterizing characterizing the system at time t, the system at time t. So, any measured property, any measured property phi of this system 
is a function of x t obviously a function of x t and uh, its dynamics and its dynamics is determined by the the dynamics of x t right. So, how that physical property behaves is dependent on that x t the unknown vector the state vector which is characterizing uh, the system at any time. So, that phi could be um, let us say the displacement or the velocity and you have d x d t equals to f of something. So, that phi could be any physical property related to that system, but that phi will heavily depend on x t the, the, the vector that is characterizing the system right. And um, basically our phi is nothing but this a function of x t and an important question in this context an important question is whether uh, the state x t can be deduced from the measured phi t data and uh, fortunately fortunately the partial answer the partial answer partial answer is given by is given by the technique of construction technique of reconstruction sorry reconstruction right so the idea is very simple basically uh, let us assume that the property phi property phi uh, is measured at all times is measured at all times and uh, from these data a k dimensional a k dimensional vector y t is considered is constructed as y t equals to phi t phi t plus d phi t plus 2 d dot dot and so on phi t plus k d transpose. The parameter d is called the delay, it is called the delay and k the embedding dimension. is the embedding dimension. So, the y series the y series can be interpreted interpreted as an orbit in the embedding space. in the embedding space. The key notion 
the key notion here is that the dynamics of this series y usually of this series y usually has the same characteristics 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 as the dynamics of the state vector of the state vector x in the phase space. Right. So, this can be uh, deduced in terms of a theorem. Uh, so, we are of course, stating it without proof. So, this is called as embedding theorem, embedding theorem. So, let uh, the measured property, let the measured property phi be a differentiable function, be a differentiable function of the state system, of the state of the system and let the integer embedding dimension embedding dimension k is greater or equal to 2 capital B plus 1. If the state vector state vector x follows an orbit on an attractor x on an attractor x in the phase space then the reconstruction reconstruction y t uh, in let us call it as equation number 2 in 2 um, follows an orbit on an attractor y in the embedding space in the embedding space and uh, the attractors attractors x and y have the same dimension d have the same dimension d and lapun of exponent and the lapun of exponents le and they have the same dimension d and the same lapun of exponent. So, basically um, reconstruction is that um, you have uh, measured some physical property which was a function of the x t and then we reconstruct uh, another uh, uh, state vector y t which actually uses the information of this phi t, but not x t right phi t that is already being measured. And uh, fortunately this um, attractor of y t and attractor of x t they resemble. Right. So, they are uh, they possess the similar property similar uh, Lapun exponent and therefore, instead of predicting uh, the, uh, the behavior of the uh, state uh, variable x t or its attractor, you can uh, uh, give the um, uh, properties of this um, reconstructed vector y t and its attractor and uh, based on which you can say that the the state variable x t and this attractor has the similar property. So, this reconstruction is done by the known uh, uh, is done with the help of known physical uh, property or physical uh, 
parameter whatever it is that is connected with the original um, uh, set of uh, uh, let us say original set of equations right. So, this is how we do the reconstruction. Um, we can uh, again uh, uh, go back to our Lorentz equation and try to do this uh, reconstruction um, uh, definition of reconstruction and uh, apply it to get some reconstructed vector which uh, comes from the measured quantity of the Lorentz system right. So, um, there is not much to talk about here in the reconstruction part. So, I will uh, stop here today and uh, this is uh, pretty much what we I wanted to talk about chaos theory. Chaos theory itself is a very big chapter, uh, it is a whole course actually. So, uh, you can look into any book on the chaos theory um, and um, get familiar with the topics in there. It is a very interesting topic, it is very uh, uh, vastly explored.